Hey, are you a physicist? Welcome to the next lesson in the Modern Physics playlist, and today we are going to be talking about the strong force. And the very first of the four fundamental forces of nature that I'll be covering in my YouTube channel. So, as we know, the strong force comes in two types, the fundamental strong interaction and the residual strong interaction. Now, the residual strong interaction is basically um, a spin-off of the fundamental strong interaction. So let's deal with this first. What this fundamental strong force is the force that um, that holds together quarks. Now we know that all um, protons and neutrons um, are made of quarks, and basic quarks can can can, uh, can form can combine together to form two things. The first one is called um, a baryon, and a baryon consists of three quarks. And the other type is called a meson which consists of two quarks and together they're, they're both called they both can be labeled as a hadron all right so basically the fundamental strong interaction is governed by a theory known as quantum chromodynamics or qcd and basically what this means is that all quarks have something called a color charge just like how electrons have a have a um, electric charge. Um, in quantum chromodynamics, uh, all quarks have something called a color charge. Now, this doesn't mean that they actually have colors. It's just a, a good way of representing how they interact. So, the underlying theory is that each baryon or meson, the overall charge, the overall color charge, has to be white. Overall charge has to be white. And the quarks can come in three colors. They can come in red, they can come in green, or they can come in blue. And together, they make white. So in a baryon, you have to have one red, one green, and one blue to make a red baryon to get the overall color charge of white. But how do we make a meson with two quarks? Because red and green, or red and blue, or green and blue, you can't really make white. So a meson is actually composed of let's say a blue and something called an anti-blue quark I'm not sure how to draw it, I just said AB an anti... oops, that, that's ugly an anti-blue quark so a blue and a minus blue, shall we say quark that makes white so that's how a baryon and meson are um, that's what baryon and mesons are consisted of and what holds these quarks together in a baryon or meson? Well, it's called, it's a fundamental strong interaction, and the particle that mediates this force is called a gluon. A glue. I'm gonna use a, a different color. A gluon. Because it glues the baryon and mesons together. So let's talk about a baryon. Two baryons that we know about a lot. The first one is called a proton. The second is called a neutron. And a, a proton is made of three quarks, two up quarks, and one down quark, whereas a neutron is made of two down quarks, and where's my green, and one up quark. And how do we know this? That's a very simple way of memorizing this. An up quark has a charge of plus two over three, whereas a down quark has a charge of negative one third because up is like positive and down is like negative. That's how I memorize it. And a proton has a charge of plus one. So what combination of of three quarks, th three up or down quarks, can make a overall net charge of plus one? Well, two up quarks that will give us four over three, and one down quark minus one third, which gives us a overall charge of plus one. Whereas a neutron has two down quarks, so negative two over three plus two over three gives us an overall charge of zero. That's how we figure out what quarks there are. And in between these things, what holds them together is a gluon. So a gluon goes between each of them and holds them together. Now the interesting thing about the strong interaction is that the force, unlike the other forces, the strong interaction doesn't decay over distance. Its force, the, the strength of the force doesn't decay over distance. Over a certain but there is a limit to, to this distance. It's about the size of the proton. 
After that, it becomes um, energetically favor fav favorable for the quarks to to bind to a new quark. So, for example, let's use a meson because it's, e it's easier. Let's say we have an up quark and a and a whatever a, a, a down quark. All right. Let's say we have an up quark and an, or a down quark and an empty an anti down quark. And we stretch this over a huge distance. Then what happens is that another anti down quark and down quark would spring out of nowhere and attach itself to these stretched apart quarks, forming new ones. So that is why you never really you can never find quarks on um, by themselves in nature because they're always um, paired up with something else. So that's a fundamental strong interaction, which is mediated by the gluon. Now, we, when we talked about the, the overall white charge, we know that a proton and neutron t um, has uh, an overall white charge. So it's color neutral, it has a neutral color charge. However, it technically has a little residual color charge. Just like how in, um, um, in atoms, there's something called a, a van der Waals, van der, van der Waals, um, um, intermol intermolecular force. The color charge, the fundamental strong interaction, has something called the residual strong interaction. So between color neutral um, um, hadrons, so it's like a proton and a neutron, there is still this little bit of um, residual color force, color charge that is binding them together. And this is what contains the protons and, and neutrons together in the atom of the nucleus. So I'm going to draw it. So we have protons and neutrons in here because they are bound together by the residual strong interaction or what we commonly call it as the nuclear force. All right. So this is basically um, the strong force. The which is which comes in two types: the fundamental strong force, which is mediated by um, the gluon, and the residual strong interaction, which is mediated by um, pions or mesons, uh, which I didn't talk about because um, I I don't feel it's necessary. Um, but basically, what what we can come up with from this is that the residual strong interaction is a spin-off of the fundamental strong interaction, and in general, what the strong interaction does in general, is that it holds protons together, it holds neutrons together, and it holds the atom, the nucleus, together. Alright, see you guys in the next episode.